Hi guys, in this video we will see how to make a wide splitter cable that divides the 5 volt power supply of, for example, an external hard disk and the data. Have you ever installed a heavy game on an external hard drive? If yes, you know that when the game requires too much data from the disk, it disconnects. The hard disk disconnects because the current required for all that data is too much compared to what the motherboard can supply, and therefore, for a fraction of a second, the hard disk disconnects. Thanks to the cable that we will make in this video this won't happen again because the current required by the hard disk will come from another USB socket that we can connect to a wall adapter or any external power supply. What we need to build this is a USB cable to split, another USB cable cut or to be cut, insulating tape, its string tubing and a cloth tape or American tape. First of all you will have to provide yourself with a normal USB that you don't need or that is broken or cut. Once you have found the cable if it is intact, you will have to cut and strip it to detect inside, if it is a standard USB cable, four colored wires of the following colors, white, green, red and black. Of these four wires, the only ones you will need are those carrying the negative, therefore the ground and the positive, therefore the 5 volt. These are the red and black wires, as it was easy to guess. You can then take a pair of scissors and cut the green and white wires, because you don't need it. Once this is done, you have to check that the cable works correctly and that there is a voltage at the end of the red and black cables. You can connect the cable to the computer and measure the voltage, but I do not recommend it because you could damage the computer if you short circuit. Rather, take a phone charger and insert the USB into it, which surely is protected from short circuit and surely would be damaged less than a computer, and it is certainly less expensive than a computer. Once the USB socket is connected to the charger, insert it into the socket and with the digital multimeter measure the voltage across the red and black wires. The value should be around 5 volts, in this case 4.99. Now it's time to move to the other cable, the main one, the one that will be connected to the hard disk or whatever. You will have to peel the wire using a very sharp cutter and in this position you will need to apply a little pressure at a small angle on the cable wire and sooner or later you will start to feel that you're cutting through the plastic. When you start to feel something harder, stop, you've reached the metal mesh, which protects the wire from interference. Repeat this process on multiple sides of the cable so you don't have to strip the cable. When that small portion of cable is totally free from the plastic, cut the metal mesh with a pair of scissors and then cut the last layer of protection from interference made of a thin sheet of metal. At this point, as with the cable above, we need to find the red the positive and the black negative negative wire inside the cable. To those then, we will have to weld in parallel the red and black wires previously identified in, in the other cable, the power supply one. What we have to do now, in fact, is to try to strip the red and black wires of the main cable without cutting them. For this, I first of all intervealed a piece of metal tape between the red wire and the others, so that I didn't risk cutting the others unintentionally. At this point, as we did before, now we have to pass the blade of the cutter over the red wire in order to slowly detect the copper underneath. By doing so, we will be able to bear the copper of the wire without cutting it. The result should be something like this. Well, stripped the red wire, we just have to do the same thing with the black wire. This time I put my finger in place of the piece of metal. Mm, for the records, I still have the finger. Again, the result should be something like this. Good, at this point we just have to prepare the wires for welding. To do this, I take the red and black wires of the power cable and cut them just 3 millimeters, just enough for a drop of thin. Once this is done, with the tip of the soldering iron, wet the wires with thin so that later it will be easier to solder them to the wires of the main cable. Good, at this point there is nothing left to do but wet the black wire of the main cable with a drop of thin and subsequently take the black wire of the power cable and solder it together with the black wire of the main cable. The result should be something like this. Next, Next, it is important that you insulate this weld with plenty of electrical tape. Once this operation has been carried out for the red wires, you will have to, to repeat it for the black wires. This therefore includes soldering the red wire to the main cable, soldering the two red wires together and insulating with electrical tape. Since we haven't cut the main cable, but we only have stripped the wires a little bit inside, to insert a heat shrinking tube on the cable we have to find a way to 
pass it through the USB connector, through which, as you can see, does not pass. Fortunately, two things come to our rescue, the springness of this shrinking tube and the thick caliper. With these, all we have to do is insert his tips inside the shrinking tube and widen them in order to widen the shrinking tube. Once this is done, as if by magic, the shrinking tube will enter the USB connector. Once the shrinking tube has widened it, insert it into the cable and then cover the notch with a piece of duct tape or American tape, with which we wrap the entire stripped part of the cable. This tape, due to the fact that it is very strong, will give stiffness to the welds. Well, now insert the shrinking tube inserted before over the welds and over the duct tape. Once this is done, we shrink the shrinking tube with a lighter and, when the shrinking tube is still hot, we press on it while rolling it on the table. This operation will help the shrinking tube to take the shape of the cable. Once you've insulated everything, it's time to test that everything works. In theory, you will need to connect one end of the main cable to your computer and the other end to a 5V supply, which in my case came from a phone charger. The computer should read the hard disk smoothly and without errors. If we try to disconnect the hard drive from the computer, the hard drive should stay on, and in this case, a white light will shine on it. Well, now you can go back to playing your game on the external hard drive, requiring a lot of data, without risking the hard drive shutting down because it draws too much current. See you in the next video.